Hello, so in my final presentation on the Kerma area product, these grey centimetres squared, what can we do with this uh, uh, number? And as you'll see, we can convert it into doses, which we hopefully will understand because they will be in terms of effective doses. But we can do more. Uh, we can actually convert them into very approximate values of patient risk. And it turns out that there really is a good reason for having some idea of what the risk to our patient is. And I'll tr try to explain that uh, later on. So let me remind you that in interventional radiology, we have procedures of various degrees of complexity. And I would say, by and large, the uh, radiation doses, the effective doses, are going to be pretty high. Most of them uh, will exceed uh, 10 uh, millisieverts uh, most of the time. So if you want to convert the Kerma area product to the effective dose, this is a measurement of what is incident on the patient. It's what the radiologist is responsible for. It can be converted into the effective dose. It's done not by radiologists, but people like myself, the imaging scientists. Would I take into account how penetrating the beam is, uh, how much of radiation I use, the region, uh, the body, the head, the uh, extremities, and the projections, AP, PA laterals, the age and the size. And the answer is, of course, I would use all of the above. And it certainly can be done. It's kind of thing that I used to do when I was more active than I am today. To give you some idea of what these numbers are, if you take a typical IR procedure in the body with a PA projection, a grey centimetre squared is crudely about 0.15 millisieverts. However, if you have a child, the same grey centimetre squared will result in an effective dose that is 10 times higher, and so uh, a 1.5 millisieverts. Although this may sound rather technical, uh, as I was retiring in 2014, um, I wrote a mini module for the Yellow Journal on radiation in diagnostic radiology. It was kind of my swan song. It's not a technical, it's an educational piece. It's geared towards radiologists and residents. It's what I think you ought to know about radiation issues in medical imaging. And you will find an explanation of how I get these numbers in this particular article. Uh, if we take uh, an IR procedure, renal angioplasty, you might use 20 minutes of fluoro, you might generate 150 further spot images, the Kerma area product might be the median value that I would expect to encounter in IR procedures, 200 gray centimeters squared, and that translates in an average size patient uh, as an effective dose of 30 millisieverts. Now, if you take effective doses and say, how do they relate to radiation risk? These actually are the radiation risk. It's the uh, cancer incidence per 100,000 individuals exposed to 10 millisieverts. And you can convert it into risk when you take demographics into account. And a 10 millisievert effective dose to a 25-year-old corresponds to a risk of something like 0.1% or 1 in a 1,000. And if you're a radiologist, I would urge you to remember this one risk value. It's very simple, very straightforward. And at the very least, it gives you some idea of what the risk might be. And I will explain to you shortly why it is of paramount importance that any radiologist knows or has some idea of what the risk is. Now, one of the things I would point out is if you don't have your renal angioplasty or whatever the exam is, what is your risk of getting cancer? And it's 40%. And so if you have an effective dose of 10 millisieverts, you are a 25-year-old, I would say your, your cancer risk might increase 
from 40 to 40.1. Why? Because there are great uncertainties in these risk estimates. It's also true that in children, the risk is probably three times higher. In elderly individuals like myself, the risk is probably about three times lower. And so if you take the average value, 0.1% for the 25-year-old, in a 65-year-old, I would divide by three, and in a one-year-old, I would multiply by three, and I would argue that that gives me some idea of the radiation risk. So children, three times higher, retirees, three times lower. Now, there are uncertainties in these risk estimates. I'm sure you've heard of the linear no threshold model or approach that we use for estimating the radiation risk. And I would say most people, certainly including myself, would say that the risk might be two to three times higher than I'm using here, and they might well be two to three times lower. And you should always bear in mind that the risk uncertainties are large, and it's certainly even possible that the risk might be even non-existent. One of these days, hopefully, we will have a better understanding. Now, you might say, why address the issue of risk? And I would say, if you want to do a worthwhile exam, then you have to believe that the benefit has to exceed any risk. So when you drive to uh, Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center, you know there's a risk that you might be killed in an automobile accident, but uh, you drive prudently and you think that the benefit, the paycheck that you get, is going to be worthwhile. And I would say likewise with patients. You believe that there's a benefit to the patient having a procedure, there may be a risk, an indicated exam is where the benefit outweighs the risk. If you have no idea of what the risk is, how can you possibly tell me that the benefit outweighs this unknown risk? And so I would argue that it is important that you have some understanding of what the risk is, because otherwise, how can you explain to me that you are to a lawyer in a court of law that you honestly believe the benefit outweighs any possible risk. And notice that I add the word any because of the uncertainties in our current knowledge. And so uh, that brings me to the end. I've explained the Kerma area product. I've explained how we can convert it into an effective dose and a crude estimate of the risk. And hopefully that information will help you in your IR work you have any questions or comments or want to chat about these issues, drop me an email at walterhuda at hotmail.com.